Hello everyone and welcome to Caroline's Craft Tree and welcome to a little show and tell tutorial on folded paper ribbons. Now a lot of people do these folded paper ribbons. That definitely isn't anything new. But I wanted to show you some of the things that I do with them and how I can decorate them. Now you can do it in so many ways but there is all these ones with beads just with plain stitching just with a straight stitch going down them and using a shiny thread or some kind of special threads um, different colors now I stitch all mine by hand a lot of people do use the machine and if that's the case you just run straight down it just some with just ribbon underneath the stitching then we've got these ones here with the beads there here's another one with the beads so you can really really decorate them up really nice you don't even have to sew them these ones here i haven't actually stitched they're ready to stitch, but I just glued the centerpiece down. A little piece of thin washi tape would go good. Now here is one I used little bugle beads on it. Pink ones and green ones, and that turned out really, really cute. I've got this one here where I used these little tiny bugle type beads which I really like that one as well. And then I've also got these ones where I put the sequences on them as well. So I just wanted to share with you a little bit on how I do some of this. So the first step is you need strips of paper. Does not matter how, the width, does not matter the length. And I do mine a little bit different probably do mine more complicated way but I just hold it and then I just fold it over and I fold it fold it now I will do this in stages so I will do all this folding bit I will do any inking etc so that just went from that length to this length now what i will do with mine and this is just because this is what i like to do and how i like to look i will ink this edge yeah the outside edges i can link ink whenever but that part i do at this stage because i i like the look that you get from having that little dark edge. Now I'm gonna take some art glitter glue because this is how I do mine. And I just, I do it this way because I like how they turn out. So now I'm going to glue two of these at a time. I put a little bit on the front and I put a little bit on the back. And now I'm going to glue that down. Now I'm going to do two more, and I do two just because it goes a little faster. And really gluing is an option. It's a personal preference on how to make these. Because as I say, some people just run the stitch right down the middle. And even if I'm going to run a stitch down the middle, by hand or with the sewing machine I will glue them like this because now when the time comes let's say if I was going to run these through the machine I could just run them through one after the other and just keep going I don't have to worry about folding I don't have to worry about starting stopping my sewing machine etc but as I say I do them by hand <clears throat> excuse me now I got a couple here that I've got folded 
and I've got some ideas for them. So let's, I've got my foam, I've got my little piercing mat, and I'm going to <clears throat> do a zigzag right down the middle of this. So I'm going to just quickly do this. And I'm just going to do kind of a few stitches of the different things that I do. Like I'll put on a few seed beads, I'll put on a few sequences, etc. Um, when you're dealing with the beads and the sequences, of course, you need to do it by hand because your sewing machine is not going to do that for you. So now I just got a piece of ribbon. I'm just going to... Take my glue and I'm just going to put little dots down in between where my stitches are, or not my stitches, my holes at the moment. And this is just going to hold this in place while I do other steps or whatever. And then this is going to go down. It's okay if it goes over my holes. Because then when I stitch, my um, zigzag stitch will be on the ribbon. So we got that there. Oops. Now, sometimes with the lace and <clears throat> whatnot, sometimes it doesn't always stick down as nice as you would like. And that's just kind of typical of things because I think all the glue gets absorbed with the fabric and then, okay, I'm just going to snip that off. So now we have this. Now I could do just a stitch on it. I could do whatever kind of you know if i wanted just a straight stitch i would have did that when i punched my holes let's just pull out a couple of sequences i don't use sequences very much but they do add a nice glitter shine bling to something <clears throat> we'll need just a couple of beads. Let's bring this little mat in. I never bring out too many beads at one time because you know that if you bring out too many, you're going to drop them. Or that's what happens to me. Sequences like to stick to you. Okay, let's. Now, what I do is now I'm just going to go up and down my holes. Now, it's going to depend on what I want to do. And of course, first stitch out, I end up getting a big knot in my thread. Which is that not typical of doing something on camera? There we go. We got it out. Saved. Okay. I always leave a tail end because I tie a knot afterwards. Now, I can do this in different ways. I can just do a zigzag, which I just go up one hole, down the other. So I will go one direction and then I will go back down and I'll get this direction. But let's do a sequence. Now I put them on by putting my sequence on first. Right like that. And then 
Just got to make sure. Oh, you know what I did? I put the sequences on after, but it really does not matter. Um, so I'm going to show you. I guess I should show you the right way. Let's take the sequence off. Okay, let's do another stitch. So we've got the stitch there. Now we're going to come back up here. Let's put this on now. And then we want one bead on there. And let's push all that down to there. Now when I go back down, I don't want to go through the bead, but I want to go through the sequence and through the hole. Like that. Then that bead is going to hold that sequence in place. Now, if I was going to do the whole thing, I would go all the way up to the end. Go all the way back to get my full zigzag. Let's just do a couple stitches in the zigzag. So you can see that... Hopefully you can see the stitches. Now when I come back up, because I'm going to go the other way, I come back up, and now I'm going the opposite direction to get my zigzag going. Let's just... See, now you can see how my zigzag is happening. Now, if I'm just going to put on a bead, my thread is there, I pick up a single bead, and then I go down my next hole. And the bead is just on the thread. And then when I come back up, I'm going to go in the same direction, so let's pick up another bead. Just to get the idea of this, there is the bead there. Now when I'm going to come back, and as I say, I would go all the way to the end, go all the way back, but I'm just trying to show you what I'm doing so I can put another bead on here. So then now they'll be a lot closer together. Okay. Now the thinner ribbon is going to be the same. Whether I put it on top I could put as many layers as I want. It doesn't really matter. Now, if I wanted to the bugle beads, we can do a bugle bead for sure. Let's pull one out. Now, you don't want your bugle beads too long. Because you want them to fit within your stitch. So... I'm coming up on the right side. I'm just going to thread on a bugle bead, go down my next hole, and the bugle bead is attached. Now I'm going to come back up. Got a knot happening. My thread is being knotty. And then put another bugle bead on. 
go down so I can make it like that now if I want to put one that way I just put it on when I'm going the opposite way on my stitch if that makes sense so we can let's put one on there so I've come up at the end of my pink see that let's just pull out being that it's just those are all long ones there's another green one let's pick up this green one and let's go that away just down the hole and there you got your other bugle bean which will make it look like this here eventually I hope these turn out good on camera now with ones like this here all that I did was took a piece of yarn which this was just some kind of weird yarn and I just did the same thing as I did with this ribbon I just put little dots of glue glued it down to hold it in place easily while I was doing more stuff to it and then I just did the zigzag you can see the zigzag on the back side it's hard to see it on the front because it's pretty close to the same color of blue but so many ways you can do these and now I don't need to do anything with these these are ready to just glue onto a page just like that and I do a wide variety of colors use a wide variety of scraps and I'll just do a whole bunch up I actually had these ones partly done I had the folded paper ribbon made and I think I did these in about two evenings just watching YouTube and just playing around so now I've got a good little collection of these for different things with this here I plan on just putting this green ribbon on there and then probably using like a cream color to go with this and that's going to there and my zigzag will go back and forth across that ribbon because it's pretty much the same width as one of my zigzags there is this one here that just has the ribbon hopefully you can see the zigzag stitching on there um, here's another one with the same yellow ribbon um, here's one with the purple ribbon you can see the zigzag on there and then I've used seed beads on there the seed beads don't add a lot of thickness but they give it that bling and shininess and then um, this one here I use just a copper color thread and that itself just blends now this one here you could add something extra to it right you could just do something like that for decoration or a little picture there or a flower or something something like this here would go really really good on there so if once they're at this point it takes nothing to decorate them further the sequence ones of course they're pretty much done you wouldn't need to add anything extra to those and as I say you don't even have to sew them you can just glue them like which one there's a couple here this pink one you can see that I've got the holes ready to stitch but I haven't actually stitched it and it's on there it's it's not going anywhere and I just have glued that down a little bit so you could just use that
but I, I will stitch around the few that I've got left to do before I put them all in. I just put them all into a container. There's a purple one with some fibers, and again, it's ready to stitch. I just have to do that yet. The eyelash trim can be a little trickier because, you know, you've got all these fibers to deal with when you're doing your needle. But if they get bunched up and stuff, that's okay. And again, this one could be a little more enhanced or a little flower or something along the top of it. Just to give it a little bit extra. But just a fun thing to do with long, skinny scraps of paper. And we all have lots of those, that is for sure. And you don't need a wide variety of beads, really. Um, if I only could pick one or two colors of beads, I'd pick like a cream color and maybe something clearish or colors that I used a lot of. I have lots of beads, so I don't worry about that. I have lots of different colors of sequences as well. So again, I don't worry about that either. But hopefully this will give you some ideas on things to do with those long skinny strips. Good in any journal, anywhere. These bigger ones would make great tabs on the side of a page. Just hang them over a little bit like that. You could make them smaller if you wanted. But that would make just a great little tab. Even some, even these other ones. Right along the edge. A lot of people use them. And you can make the same thing out of fabric. And you could do the same thing with fabric ones. You could use the sequences and the beads on fabric ones as well. Or just stitching. Um, I haven't made any cloth ones where I've hand stitched yet. But I'm sure I will. But I would love to see your versions of the paper folded ribbons and how you spruce them up and make them look different or um, decorate them so they're pretty much finished. But enjoy this little tutorial. Check out the other videos and whatnot and we'll see you again soon. Bye!